This is Jeff Weiss with a lecture on plant propagation unit 3. This is part 2 of the coverage of the plant propagation growth environment and will include material on integrated pest management. Uh, but the integrated pest management will be in part uh, 2 of this recording. So uh, this week um, we will complete the readings in the text, uh, Chapter 3. Um, I, there'll be a lecture in two parts, and there's a couple of videos uh, that you might find uh, interesting and informative. Our uh, discussion question will be on the topic of integrated pest management, and your uh, assignment for Units 2 and 3, this will be a double-weighted uh, assignment, uh, will be to visit and complete a report on uh, a greenhouse, a commercial greenhouse, and talk about some of the business issues they face. Key terms and concepts we cover this week uh, include competition, mycorrhizae, uh, beneficial organisms, uh, invasive species, integrated pest management, uh, cultural practices, and uh, care of plants, uh, especially hardening off to help them make the transition from a protected greenhouse environment to a um, uh, out to planting out in the field. Learning objectives uh, will be to look at uh, the remaining environmental factors that pr affect propagation, competition, beneficials, and pests, and uh, list and explain uh, some of the important options in an integrated pest management program explain how accelerated growth techniques can help um, produce uh, plants in less time and at higher quality and finally to describe how plants are transitioned from artificial to natural growth conditions. So um, accelerated growth techniques uh, is this combination of techniques um, that we started talking about last week um, that are intended to produce uh, genetically superior plants and to reduce the um, the amount of time uh, to get them from propagule to uh, a usable um, plant and to help them acclimatize to natural conditions and it gets into a group of uh, topics that we'll talk in the f about in coming weeks about plant selection hybridization, and propagation techniques. So the remaining uh, topics that we're going to cover uh, in this lesson include beneficial organisms uh, and competition uh, from weeds, and then the topic of pests and diseases. And we'll cover those uh, last two bullet points uh, in a discussion of integrated pest management. Some of the beneficial organisms um, um, are pretty amazing um, and, and these uh, associations um, with things like nitrogen fixing bacteria go back um, many millions of years. But nitrogen fixing bacteria are um, organisms that reside in the nodules of roots of certain plants. Um, legumes, uh, plants such as uh, soybeans and vetches and clover are some of the most familiar uh, plants that exhibit this uh, association. Uh, but there are, are also uh, recently discovered a number of other plants that also um, uh, fix nitrogen. And this has been critically important for the um, um, buildup of nitrogen in the soil uh, following uh, years of uh, cultivation. Um, these um, Bacteria increase soil nitrogen and, and enrich soil fertility over time. So uh, legumes and soil fixing uh, or nitrogen fixing uh, plants um, are very important in a uh, healthy uh, crop rotation. Um, the alternative is uh, pumping uh, lots of nitrogen into the soil um, via um, synthetic fertilization or other or, or manuring. Uh, but uh, use of nitrogen fixing uh, plants has been uh, a, a huge development in the uh, uh, history of plant propagation and plant 
cultivation. Um, for purposes of um, our class, um, it's an important propagation practice to inoculate the seeds uh, or the seedlings uh, of uh, nitrogen fixing plants with uh, spores of these bacteria in order to allow them to uh, continue to prosper and grow and we'll see uh, some examples of this when we go into the lab. Uh, I'll be giving you um, inoculum uh, to use uh, when we plant certain of the uh, native plants out in the uh, greenhouse. Another example of uh, beneficial uh, organisms that associate with plants are mycorrhizae. Uh, these are the filaments of fungi and in fact most plants depend on these uh, beneficial fungi to help supply nutrients, especially phosphorus. Um, in some cases these um, fungi uh, grow right into the roots of plants and in some cases even into the cells of roots of plants and they go out into the soil and um, uh, acquire nutrients, especially phosphorus, and deliver it to the uh, plant uh, in exchange for a share of the photosynthates or the sugars uh, produced by the plant. And uh, if you want to do some independent uh, research, um, um, let me know. I can give you references to learn a lot more about uh, the, uh, these fungi that are so much a part of, uh, of our um, plant success and uh, uh, it's really interesting stuff. Um, and then there's the more familiar beneficial organisms including the pollinators. Um, I'll call these all the bee words. Uh, bees, butterflies, birds, and bats are some of the more familiar uh, pollinators. Uh, but there are a number of others. And in addition to pollination, um, um, many of uh, uh, insects, uh, particularly ants, uh, play an important role in um, taking, uh, collecting seeds from plants and uh, um, taking them underground and putting them into a uh, uh, an environment where the seeds have a very high probability of germinating and, and flourishing. So um, there's a wide, wide variety of beneficial organisms and uh, uh, it's really cool to study them. Now this is my own little case study. Um, the plant that's pictured here is a, a rare um, prairie white fringed orchid. It's uh, a federally listed species and it's uh, quite a rare and beautiful plant in Illinois. Uh, and the native pollinator is a hermit sphinx moth. And you can see it pictured here. It goes uh, uh, with its proboscis goes deep into the tube of this flower uh, in order to collect nectar and it um, in, in the course of doing so it pulls out these little um, pollen bearing organs called pollinia and it spreads the pollen from one uh, orchid to the other. Now in the site that I was working in uh, this moth has not been seen and it, it, it's a nocturnal um, uh, insect, but it has not been seen on the site. So what we've tried to do over the years is to uh, artificially um, in inseminate these orchids with uh, uh, these pollinia. And what we do in instead of the proboscis, we go inside these flowers with tooth, deep inside these flowers with toothpicks, pull out the little yellow pollinia, uh, stick the toothpicks in a board of, uh, of uh, uh, <laughs> plastic, and then um, using a formula, uh, distribute the uh, pollen across uh, d different plants and different populations of these orchids. And uh, uh, it's a very cool project and our efforts have been uh, met with success. The, the site that I've worked on uh, has uh, increased the number of uh, orchids from just a very small number now to several hundred and several populations. So it's exciting to be a part of propagating a rare species and seeing it, uh, seeing its numbers recover. But then there's this whole other um, side of the um, of the equation. All of the weeds uh, that compete with um, our crop plants. Uh, many of them are invasive species that have been transported from places around the world 
and then there's the whole range of uh, uh, herbivores, uh, insects, uh, birds, plants, uh, I'm sorry, um, uh, mammals, other organisms that uh, uh, cause damage to our uh, to our plants and then uh, disease organisms so um, we're going to I'm going to break at this point um, and we'll continue on with part two of this lecture talking about uh, uh, some of these um, potentially harmful organisms and um, a process called integrated pest management that is uh, um, a way of horticulturalists thinking about how to uh, manage these to uh, reasonable levels of damage. So um, that's it for part one. Be back with you in a few minutes on part two of this lecture.